music say? Yes, sir, Amos, that music say, Good health to all from Rexall. The stores with the orange and blue sign. Yes, 10,000 independent Rexall druggists at the stores with the orange and blue sign bring you transcribed The Amos and Andy Show, written by Joe Connolly and Bob Mosier, featuring Ernestine Wade, Johnny Lee, Amanda Randolph, Roy Glenn, Yvonne Watson, Jeff Alexander's music, yours truly, Harlow Wilcox, and starring radio's all-time favorites, Freeman Gosden and Charles Carell. Amos and Andy! How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? I am Freeman Gosden. Now is the time of year when health-wise people start supplementing their diets with vitamins. In the Gosden family, we do it with Rexall Plenamins, the best-balanced multivitamin formula you can buy. That's because Plenamins give you 10 important vitamins, plus liver, iron, and vitamin B12. This winter, try switching to Plenamins. That's P-L-E-N-A-M-I-N-S, Plenamins. And you'll find them at Rexall drugstores everywhere. Well, the kingfish's wife, Sapphire, and her mother have spent the day at the beauty parlor. Right now, they've returned home and are showing the kingfish their new hairdos. Look, George. I have operated give me a poodle cut. And just look at Mama. Yes, George. I had him give me a horse tail. <laughs> horse tail and a poodle cut. Holy mackerel, the way they done treated you two, you should report the beauty parlor to the SPCA. That's what <laughs> if we was a couple of young gals, you'd pay more attention to us. Yes, George, I know you. You're just like all men. Find fault with your wife, but you looked at young gals on the street all the time. Honey, I ain't looked at no young gals since I married you. <laughs> you ain't, George? No, and it's enough to break a man's heart. <laughs> well, what you mean? Well, that's like going down to the meat market and drooling over steak and chops when you know all you got home is ham hocks and sour belly. That's <laughs> You should talk about looks. What about that kisser of yours? That wrinkled face, them watery eyes, and them saggy jowls. You look like a bucket of wet wash that just come out to mangle. Ah, <laughs> uh, George, to think what I got stuck with after I had all them handsome men begging me to marry him. Oh, yeah? Now, just name one. Name one handsome man that begged you to marry him. Well, for one, there was Harry Thompson. Harry Thompson. Now, Dad was a real unpretty boy. <laughs> and with that, he was so bow-legged that when he walked down the streets, his shins touched the ground. They did not, George. Then how come he was the only boy in town that had his kneecaps half-soled? <laughs> and Sapphire, there was Peter Jackson, the society boy. Oh, he was crazy about Sapphire. Oh, yeah? I had lots of boyfriends, didn't I, Mama? I say you did, daughter. Mmm. And such handsome fellas, too. Oh, the gay times and the can ons at our house. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, Mama. I <laughs> remember those Saturday nights. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> well, I ain't gonna sit here and listen to you two old firemen rake over the old coal. <laughs> Down to the lodge hall. Hmm, I wonder what did go on before I met Sapphire. Oh, just talk. She had all them chances. Why did she ever marry me? I was really a hunk of nothing. <laughs> Mama was talking about her old boyfriends, telling me how popular Sapphire was when she was young. Yeah, well, you must have seen something in her, Kingfish. You went with her all through high school. Well, it wasn't exactly as romantic as you make it sound, Andy. Wasn't it? You see, when I was young, I had crooked teeth and weak eyes. Mm. 
And my parents only had enough money to take care of one. So they had my teeth straightened out and they let my eyes go. I'll tell you, and if it had been the other way around today, I would have been snaggletooth but happy. I <laughs> yeah. She was lucky to get you, all right. Well, I tell you, Kingfish, there's a lot... Uh, hey, look at that fella coming across the street here towards the lodge hall. Yeah, ain't he sure is a big fella, ain't he? Yeah, man, look at them shoulders. They must be four feet wide. <laughs> he looked like he got Mr. Hartshaft and marks right in the suit with him, you know? Uh, you know, it ain't the shoulders that bothers me. Look at the size of them feet. <laughs> Last time I seen a pair of feet that big was on the desk down at the police station. <laughs> yeah, they sure got a San Quentin spread to them, ain't they? <laughs> There's a man that I definitely ain't at home to. Oh, me, he's coming in here, Kingfish. Oh, uh, we ain't here now. Uh, come in. Excuse me, I wonder if you could... Uh, he left for Australia six months ago. Yeah, and I went with him. I went with him. I beg your pardon? Uh, nothing. Uh, uh, you uh, looking for someone uh, here, ain't you, mister? Yes, my name's Theodore Thomas. I'm looking for George Stevens. Mm, George Stevens, uh... That's the one that went to Australia. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, heard he bought a big farm down there and was raising Anzacs. <laughs> That's right. He'd unplanted 3,000 acres of them. Well, if he's not here, I won't trouble you. You see, I just wanted to look him up. I used to be a friend of his wife's before she married him. Oh, uh, you was a friend of his wife's. Uh... How friendly was you? Well, uh... <laughs> that friendly, huh? Well, certainly. Me and Sapphire were pretty close. You was, huh? Well, I wouldn't tell Stevens this, of course, but uh, when I used to take her out, we had a lot of laughs over the pet name she had for old Stevens. <laughs> What did she call old Stephen? Wet Blanket George. <laughs> you see, when they had a date, he'd take her home early, shake hands goodnight with her at the front door. Then she'd walk through the house, and I'd meet her at the back door. <laughs> when you met her there, did uh, you shake hands with her, too? <laughs> Oh, come now, Buster. <laughs> I'm anxious to see Sapphire again. She sure was a hot patootie. Confidentially, I used to call her Sizzling Lips. <laughs> Sizzling Lips. Oh, yeah. I could go on like this about Sapphire for hours, but why bore you? Yeah, why do that? Yeah. <laughs> Say, Kingfish. Now I know what Sapphire was doing while you was having your teeth straightened. Well, I'm sorry Stevens isn't here, and if you're not sure that he's left the country, I suppose there are numbers in the phone book. I'm bound to locate Sapphire sooner or later. Yeah, are you going to stay in town, or how long? Oh, yeah, several weeks. I'm over at the Lennox Arms. Uh, thank you for all your help. Yeah, well, uh, so long, Mr. Thomas. Well, I hope I get a hold of Sapphire. Thanks again. Nice fella, huh, Kingfish? What do you mean, nice fella? That fella was going with Sapphire all the time we was engaged. And Sapphire's always saying to me that she had a romantic engagement. She did. Too bad you didn't get in on it. <laughs> uh, tell me this, uh, what you gonna do about it? I gonna go home and have it out with that woman. Oh, and uh, the humortification of it all. I mean. uh, and uh, you know, when I was courting Sapphire, I used to go over there and oil the porch swing so Mama wouldn't get wise in case I wanted to try a little smooching out there. You did, huh? Yeah, and uh, now after all these years, I find I was taking the squeak out of someone else's romance. Oh, I... Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist, one of the 10,000 independent druggists who have made the word Rexall part of our own store names. 
We've done that because we recommend and sell Rexall drug products. One Rexall exclusive we're especially proud of is Ann Delafield's all-purpose deep cream. Why? Because it saves our women customers time and money. You see, Ann Delafield's all-purpose deep cream is all creams in one. It cleans, it lubricates, it conditions your skin. It's one single cream in one golden-topped jar that gives complete complexion care. When you ask for it, ask to see the other Andela Field cosmetics. Face powder, lipstick, skin freshener, and eye makeup kit. The sensible cosmetics for modern women. At Rexall Drug Stores, everywhere. Sapphire, come in the living room. What is it? I want to talk to you, sizzling lips. <laughs> well, what are you talking about? Now, look here. Just what did Theodore Thomas mean to you? Theodore Thomas? Well, George, it's strange you should mention him. He called up this afternoon. He's in town. Sapphire, how come you never told me about this man? Well, George, I n- never did think it was important. It was just a case of puppy love. Well, the puppy is now going up to be a big St. Bernard. <laughs> and I don't want him woof-woofing around my way. He told me how he used to kiss you. Oh, don't be silly, George. The only time I ever kissed Theodore Thomas was when we was playing post office. Yeah, well, the way he tells it, you must have been the postmaster general. <laughs> George, he's just an old friend. Say, he wants to see us while he's in town. Well, I was putting my foot down. You ain't seeing that man, or my name ain't Wet Blanket Stevens. <laughs> well, George, it won't hurt us to entertain him while he's in town. Nothing doing. You entertained him enough 24 years ago. Why, George Stevens, you're jealous. So sure I jealous. If that back porch Romeo come around here, I'll bunch him right in the nose, too. Oh, George, we was never that serious. Now, come on and calm down. Calm down nothing. I ain't having him come around here violating the sanctity of my home. (laughs) Oh, George, he's so nice, and he's been so successful in business. I don't care. I'll tear him limb from limb. And he's always been so generous with his money. I'll take him and I... Well, don't just stand there, woman. Get him on the phone and get him up here for dinner. Well, George, I thought you never wanted to see him again. I thought you were so jealous. Well, I didn't like the idea of you smooching with the boy, but I got to admire you, honey. You do? Yeah, at least you had the good taste to smooch with a man with money. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Andy, come on in, boy. Theodore Thomas ain't here yet. You was the first dinner guest to arrive. Yeah. Well, tell me, Kingfish, uh, what is the reason for this fancy dinner and everything? Well, Andy, uh, I told you this Thomas fella is loaded with money, and he is noted for his generosity. Oh, he is, huh? <laughs> boy, I tell you, Andy, I... Uh, uh... Well, George, me and Mama's all dressed. How do we look? Yeah. How do you like our evening gowns? Yeah, turn around. Let us look you over. Uh, uh, say, Kingfish. What is it, Andy? With your mama in that backless evening gown, I just noticed something. What? That old gal is ugly clear down to the third vertebrae. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing, oh, honey, nothing, nothing. We just told you. Sapphire, I wonder if Theodore Thomas would think he was changed much. He thought she was so pretty in the old days. Well, now that the subject has been brung up, Sapphire, I done took the big bulbs out and put 20-watt bulbs in all the lamps. But you still could exercise a little caution and stick to the shadows. Now, look here. <laughs> oh, Sapphire, that must be your old boyfriend, Theodore. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now, see here, George. He's got a lot of money, and he might give you a job or do something nice for you. But for heaven's sake, you and Andy be tactful. Yeah, well, oh, don't worry about us now. Wait a minute. I'll go and let him in. You all wait here. Uh, good evening. I'm Theodore Thomas. Well, how you do, sir? It's a pleasure to meet a man of your generosity and credit rating. <laughs> why, why, you're the man I talked to over at the lodge hall. 
you must be Sapphire's husband. Yeah, that's me, all right. Wet blanket Stevens. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, uh, the things I said this afternoon, I, I hope I didn't offend oh, you. Oh, no, so. No, no, I broad-minded. I, uh, come on in, meet everybody. Uh, here we are, folks. Uh, uh, this is Theodore Thomas. Why, Theodore, it's so good to see you after all these years. Oh, Sapphire, it's good to see you. You haven't changed a bit. You look just as young and vivacious as you did 24 years ago. Oh, thank you, Theodore. And you remember my mama. Why, Mrs. Smith. <laughs> I'd know you anywhere. Oh! <laughs> yes, you're still the same sweet, charming, gracious person. Oh, Mr. Thomas. <laughs> Holy mackerel, Kingfish. I don't know what this boy's been hitting, but whatever it is, I'll bet it's illegal to drink it. <laughs> Uh, you have met my friend here before, Mr. Brown. Oh, yes. Yeah. So how are you? Oh, uh, how is you? How is you? It's a pleasure to shake your helping hand again. <laughs> well, uh, now uh, that we are all happy here, suppose we tie on the feed bag. Uh, Andy, you sit down there. Uh, Mama, you sit there. Sapphire, you sit at the head of the table. And uh, where shall I sit? Uh, right here, Mr. Thomas. Uh, this place right here. With the pen and the ink, in case you want to write out a few checks between courses. Ha! <laughs> Well, I don't know. I... Go right ahead. Uh, the stuff is expensive, but load up on it. We don't <laughs> grudge you nothing around here. This has been a delightful dinner. No. Such a charming family group. No. You know, it makes me regret, Sapphire, that you married George instead of me. I think I would have been very happy as a member of the Smith family. I wish I still had the opportunity. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. Uh, yeah, thanks. I wish there was something I could do for all you people. Oh, I'm sure you'll think of some way to express your gratitude, even though the banks is closed. That's right. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking here, George. You say you and your friend, Mr. Brown, are... Uh, well, Simmy retired at the moment. Oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. They done cut off our unemployment checks. <laughs> well, I think I could use you two men in my company. Now that I'm making my headquarters here in New York. Oh, you could? Oh, hot dog. Yes, I could start you at uh, $100 a week apiece. Of course, you'd be traveling salesmen on the road between here and the south. Yeah, well, I don't know about traveling, leaving Sapphire alone here in New York. Of course, I'll be here to look after her. Oh, you would, huh? Well, I... Uh... Oh, George, a hundred dollars a week. Oh, ain't that wonderful, George? What do you think, Andy? Well, Kingfish, there's only one thing to do. Put the big bulbs back in the lamp and get out of town. Yeah. Now... Listen to a lady and our Rexall family druggist. I've got such a cold in my nose, I don't know what to do. Why, ma'am, all you need to do is use Rexall nasothricin. Nasothricin? What's that? Rexall's marvelous new nose drops. The antibiotic nose drops that give you two-way relief. Which two ways? Well, nasothricin quickly reduces nasal congestion, opens up a stuffy nose, so to speak. And because it contains antibiotic tyrothricin... It also inhibits many of the bacteria that contribute to the discomfort of a head cold. Believe me, that adds up to a wonderful two-way relief. Then give me that name again, quick. Nasothricin, Rexall's antibiotic nose drops. Ask for it at Rexall drug stores everywhere. And remember, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. <laughs> Just being a traveling salesman away from home ain't bad, is it? No, sir, Kingfish. And this Charlotte, North Carolina here, this is really a nice town, ain't it? Yeah, funny thing. Uh, we've been on the road here for ten days, and 
I ain't heard nothing from Sapphire. Hmm. Usually when I was away, I guess two or three nasty letters from the old gal. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking, Kingfish, uh, you know Sapphire up there in New York and that Theodore Thomas there, uh, you don't think there's any uh, handshaking going on on the back porch, do you? Oh, no, Andy, all that stuff was before we was married. Yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, uh, what you got there, boy? Well, I dropped by the newsstand in the library of the hotel here and picked up a couple of Lenox Avenue newspaper. I want to keep up with what's going on back in the neighborhood. Yeah, that's a good idea. I always like to read the society news. See here, the, the Peisters had another big party for the 400. Hmm. Just think, Andy, Mr. DePeister was nothing until he got that garbage collecting contract from the city. Yeah, that's right. Swill put that man right where he is today. <laughs> Yeah, they're funny. Uh, uh, fun, uh, say, wait a minute, here. What is this? What's the matter? Look at this picture here, Andy. There's Sapphire and a mama. Yeah. And it looks like there's in a nightclub with that Theodore Thomas, too. Yeah, look at the caption there. It says, Lennox Avenue's latest romance. Pictured above is Sapphire Stevens with Theodore Thomas, wealthy manufacturer. Accompanied by her mother, friends expect an elopement any moment. Holy mackerel, Kingfish. That's why he done got you out of town. Yeah, Andy, you was right. Yeah, he say he wished that he could get in the family, and getting me out of town was the opportunity he'd been talking about. Holy smoke, Kingfish. This is terrible. And us way down here in North Carolina. What you gonna do? Well, I'll tell you. I gotta do something, Andy. Look at that two-timing sapphire there. Uh, I know she must be enjoying herself, because she's grinning back to her third molar there. <laughs> Look at that. The one with the enamel fell off of. See that? <laughs> But Kingfish, you has got to act fast. The papers say that the elopement may happen any minute. And it has only one thing to do. I'll have the girl at the switchboard put in a call to Algonquin J. Calhoun in New York, and maybe I can get him to put a restraining order on my wife. Yeah, that's the stuff. Call Calhoun. That's the thing to do, all right. I'll say. Look at the food on her plate there. That Theodore really means business. He done opened his campaign with a T-bone. Look at that. <laughs> me, Andy. I done had the hotel operator put the call through to Calhoun an hour ago. She said the lines out of Charlotte was all busy and she'd call me back when they was clear. I tell you, Andy, I... Uh, uh, hello? Mr. Stevens, this is the hotel operator. We're ready on your New York call. Oh, uh, well, put it through. Hello? Hello? Al Gonquin J. Calhoun speaking. Oh, Mr. Calhoun, this is Charlotte calling. Uh, Char- I think you got the wrong number. I don't know no gal named Charlotte. Who is this? This is Charlotte, North Carolina. What's that? Carolina, Carolina. Oh, hiya, Carolina. (laughs) What happened to Charlotte? Uh, uh, Hello, uh, hello. Who's this? Uh, This is the Kingfish. I'm down here in the south. Oh, what them two gals doing with you? No two gals. I was here with Andy. Oh, just Andy. Hello. Is this Mr. Calhoun? Oh, hi, Andy. <laughs> hey, what happened to your voice? Uh, hello, hello. Hello. Uh, Calhoun, that wasn't Andy. That was the hotel operator. Man, you really got a room full of women down. <laughs> Calhoun, look here. I is in terrible trouble, and I don't know what to do. That's easy. Just don't let Carolina find out about Charlotte. <laughs> oh, no, Calhoun. Look here. I just found out that my wife is planning on a looping up there in New York with an old boyfriend by the name of Theodore Thomas. Oh. Well, what you want me to do, Kingfish? Well, now, look. Me and Andy is leaving for New York tonight. Yeah. But we are afraid they're liable to a loop before we get there. Yeah. Now, I want you to bust the thing up. Well, now, how I gonna do that? Well, I don't know, but you gotta act fast. Have him throw it in jail for wife stealing or something. Any kind of trumped up charge. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll do my best, King. Fitch. Fine. I was leaving Charlotte tonight. Well, yeah, that's a smart thing to do. <laughs> All this wife trouble, you better leave Carolina down there, too. <laughs> Yeah, Amos, me and the Kingfish got into town this morning. He's up at his apartment now. Yeah, well, Andy, I just can't believe all this nonsense about the Kingfish thinking Sapphire 
is going to loop with her old boyfriend, Theodore Thomas. Oh, it's legitimate, all right. He say he wanted to get into family, and then he sent me and the kingfish out of town so he could have a clear field. Yeah, well, I still can't believe that about Sapphire. Uh, what's this you told me Calhoun did to bust the thing up? Oh, yeah. He done swore out a warrant and had Mr. Thomas thrown in jail for wife stealing. Yeah, and it serves that two-timer right, too. Well, I don't know. That seemed like a terrible thing to do to the man. Well, the kingfish had to act fast. If Sapphire had married that other fellow, it would have made the kingfish a bigger mystic. George Stevens, this is a terrible thing you've done, having Mr. Thomas thrown in jail. Yeah, well, you wasn't fooling me. I knowed what was going on. George, he got out an hour ago, and he's so mad. He said he'll never speak to none of us again. And he was so rich and could have done so much for us. Well, I don't care. I wasn't going to lose you, Sapphire. I wasn't going to take no chances on you eloping with that fella. Me eloping? What is you talking about? Listen, I wise to you. I see that picture in the newspaper, and I hear all the talk about him wanting to get into the family. Certainly he wanted to get in the family, you big boob. And while you was away, he proposed to Mama. They was going to be married next Saturday. Oh, no! Friends, this is Harlow Wilcox with three good reasons why you should always buy Rexall aspirin. First, there's no faster-acting aspirin made. Second, every tablet of Rexall aspirin contains five full grains of pure aspirin. Third, in the hundred-tablet bottle, Rexall aspirin costs barely more than half a cent per tablet. So, never ask for just aspirin. Ask for Rexall aspirin at Rexall drugstores everywhere. The friendly stores with the orange and blue sign. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, rely on your Rexall family druggist. And when you visit him, be kind enough to say, Amos and Andy sent you. Thank you and good night. See you next Sunday. It's the bargain of the year, the Luxury Electric Blanket. A $34.95 value, only $19.95. All through November at Rexall Drug Stores everywhere. Why, that's $15 off. Correct. $15 off on a fully guaranteed double bed size electric blanket with automatic control that compensates for changing room temperatures. Imagine $15 off on a luxury electric blanket. All through November at Rexall Drug Stores everywhere. Be sure to be with us at this same time next Sunday when your Rexall druggist will again present the Amos and Andy Show, transcribed and directed by Cliff Howell. Stay tuned for the Bing Crosby program, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>